Here's another chess game that was played at a team tournament. The good guys, that's us, were black, and the bad guys, that's them, were white. Because of that, we're going to flip the board around and put black on the bottom. The first few moves are pretty typical moves for chess. Very good opening for both sides. Um, one thing that black needs to look out for is this move right here that white makes because they're trying to set up a fried liver on this little section right here. Um, the fried liver would put, if the uh, knight were to go here, it would fork the rook and the queen and then one of those pieces would be taken. Uh, black responds correctly by castling. And so now uh, white cannot do the fried liver, so good job for black noticing that. But white goes ahead and tries it anyway, and we have a sacrifice of a rook for a knight and a bishop. I guess it's a rook and a pawn for a knight and a bishop, which is six to six. In fact, uh, black is actually a little bit further ahead in that position. So if you ever have anybody that tries to do a fried liver on you in your black, and there's an opportunity to exchange the rook for the knight and the bishop. Um, it's actually in black's best interest to go ahead and do that. We're going to go another move here to this position. White moves the pawn up to f3, attacking the bishop and putting a tempo on the bishop. The bishop has to move, but the problem is that now black's king is open. And we talked in the first lesson about some of the areas that you look for tactics to happen. And one of those places is an open king. And here, the white has left the king open and gives black a lot of opportunities to go in there. And black has to pay attention to that threat. So black backs off, which is what black needs to do. White puts a tempo here on the other bishop. Now remember, we had talked about how the king is open. Do you see how black could take advantage of that? Well, if you said that black could attack the king by moving to the square c5, you are correct. So black is attacking the white king, and the only way that the king can get out of it, well, I suppose white could block it with the knight, but that would be an exchange of three to five, which would be in black's favor. So the best thing that white could do is move out of the way, and now black's in a really bad situation, or white's in a really bad situation, and black has a really nice setup right here. Bl black takes white's knight. White recaptures the bishop. Now you will notice that white now has two unprotected pieces. And that's going to be a little bit critical a little bit later on in the game. Uh, looks like we also have an unprotected pawn here. So now white has three unprotected pieces. So white captures the bishop. Black moves up. It looks like a fork right here between the bishop and the knight, but it's not a very strong fork because it's not backed up by anything. So black can just take the white pawn pretty easily. Um, we have another tempo right here, and black moves out of the way. The problem with that move is that it opens up this square right here so that you can fork both the king and the rook. And remember, undefended pieces and an open king are things that you need to look for as a chess player to try to look for tactics and to give you an opportunity to win games. And so if black, let's say black could get the queen to this square right here after the bishop moves, then black would be able to fork those two pieces and win the rook for free because the rook's being unprotected. So black moves the knight out of the way to which white responds by moving the pawn up to f4. And remember those two unprotected pieces? What black should have done is taken the queen and put it right there to put a fork. It would have been a devastating move for white. White would have had to have moved the king out of the way and then end up losing 
Uh, well, I guess the rook could go in the way to defend it, but either way, black is going to get that rook for free and gain five extra points in the game. Instead, black just recaptured the pawn. So make sure that if there's a threat, like in this position right here, knight is threatening pawn, always go through the ABCs of chess. A for attack, B for block, C for capture, D for defend, E for exchange, or F for flee. Usually an attack, letter A, the first letter of the alphabet, is the one that's going to be the best move. Not always, but many times it is. So here, black captures back, and white captures the pawn with the rook. Guess what? Another unprotected piece. So now we have three major pieces in black and white's army that is unprotected. And each one of those can become a target for some kind of threat or attack from black. This part of the game was the most critical part of the game. And it's this part of the game that separates great chess players from average chess players. We had talked about the unprotected pieces that white has, and so black decides to take advantage of that by attacking the rook with the queen. White now defends it. Now, this is, this is hard to see, but white has an x-ray attack here on the rook. Now, the knight's being protected, so everything is okay, but when black made the next move, it wasn't thinking about this x-ray attack against the rook. And so what black did was put an attack on the queen, which seems like it's a pretty good move, but actually white can turn the tables right here, because now black has two unprotected pieces because that knight moved out of the way, and white now takes the pawn on b7, leaving the black rook open to be captured. Now, uh, black thinks that they have a good idea to stop this. By putting the, knight, the um, bishop here, it would seem like the bishop is being protected and, um, and that everything would be okay, but there's a problem. White has another x-ray attack against the black king. And because this knight is being pinned, it is not protecting this bishop. In fact, the only piece that's protecting it is the black queen. So what white does in this position is white goes to b2, which white flees from the situation, but that was actually the worst move. Remember the ABCs of chess. Attack, block, capture, defend, exchange, flee. White's best move was to take the bishop. And it seems kind of crazy to take the bishop because there's three points being lost uh, for nine. And black can recapture. So now it's nine to three, but guess what? White has the pawn. And white now has uh, an advantage, has two rooks and a minor piece, and has more pawns. So white could have turned the tables in that position if white would have taken a little more time to think about what was happening. Black, now that white has retreated and has fled from the scene, black has the advantage. And black noticed that white has two undefended pieces on very critical squares. And so white does, is, or what black does, is gives a fork. Do you see where black can move to get the fork? If you said move to e2, you're correct. Knight's attacking the king and the rook at the same time. King has to move out of the way, and black gobbles up the rook. The game is going to end very soon here. White decides to drive off the black knight, but black does a great job. Black looks for the attack before fleeing away from the action, and Black notices that the king can be checked by moving the other Black knight to g4. Great move by Black. So now Black White has to pause their plan and move out of the way. Um, Black continues attacking the king. So now the king has to move again. 
Um, this next move is called a decoy, and I thought it was a really, really great decoy. What Black did is Black took the pawn, and at first you're going to think, boy, that's a crazy move, because Black's giving up a bishop for a pawn, but Black has a very sneaky idea, and this is a great move from Black. White recaptures with the pawn, and Black moves the queen down to d1 for checkmate, and the game is over.